this is David for Big Bits, and in the last video we talked about uh, our RSI strategy that I'm showing you here, and in this video we are going to discuss using the lowest and the lowest bars function. There's also the opposite version, which is the highest and the highest bars function, which basically what these do allow you to uh, just with one line of code tell uh, PineScript to look back a certain amount of candles for the lowest value within that period. So this doesn't have to do with just price and in our example we're actually going to use the RSI. We're going to look back at the RSI. We want to find the lowest RSI and we're going to want to require our lowest RSI to be below a certain value. We're going to attempt uh, to find a bullish divergence by making sure that our price is currently lower uh, in some aspect than the price of the lowest RSI and our price uh, is still on a downtrend. So uh, essentially something similar to what you see here, you see the RSI has kind of bottomed here and we want to buy below at a certain point because usually that's how you would find a bullish divergence against the RSI. So we're actually going to go ahead and do this. We're going to have a few new parameters or inputs, I should say, as they're called on PineScript here. Let me copy these over. I did a lot of live coding in the last video and it went uh, pretty long. So we're actually going to just copy some stuff over from a more completed script this time. Uh, we're just going to call this our buy below target. And paste this in here. It's two parameters. We're going to be looking to buy below the lowest low in the RSI divergent look back target percentage. And it sounds really kind of silly, uh, but it'll make more sense in just a little bit. And then there's also the source. We're going to be looking back and we're going to want to copy this value from the lowest RSI in our look back. So if we look back with 30 candles here, the lowest RSI is here. We'll want to grab the closing price or the low, something like that from there. And that's what the source is here. Now going on, we are also going to have to specify what that buy below target is with a formula. And we're going to do that down here next to our profit and loss. And the reason we're doing it down here is because this is going to be pretty much the exact same calculation uh, as what we're doing here. And let me go ahead and paste this in here. It's going to look pretty overwhelming there's a lot of variables going on here and we're doing a lot of different things. So our buy below target, what we're going to set it to be is we are going to use our buy below target source, which is the close. And we're going to look back using the lowest bars. So I told you the lowest function looked back to give you the lowest value. When you do a look back, say we're going to look back 50 or 100 candles, whatever it is, we are going to return the value that is the number of bars offset from the current candle. So if we look back, you know, say this is 25 candles back, the value it returns is going to be negative 25. So when we look at the close and we're going to be looking back at the RSI through this period, it's going to return a negative number. So this is essentially the same thing as saying, let's look at the close at 25, but both of these are now variable and can change based on our inputs. So for example, uh, if we change our source to a low, it would be equivalent of doing something like this. And if we were looking back, you know, a hundred periods, maybe we had a lower RSI even back here. So the value it returns would be like 88. Uh, but it actually returns a negative number, so we multiply it by negative 1 to fix that. So that's what you're seeing here. We're getting the, uh, the closing price of whatever the lowest RSI is in that look back period. So it's a little bit confusing uh, if you haven't been able to follow the code, but hopefully where I've done this, it makes a little bit more sense. Then what we're doing is we're going to subtract a percentage difference from that to create our buy below target. Now let's see what I had that set at by default here. Buy below target percent zero. Now this is something that can kind of give you a little bit of buffer. So if the value it plots is here uh, and you wanted to buy when the price dropped below that when the RSI was going down a certain amount in the trend, um, you might want to give it a buffer. So if 
you had it set to where it would plot here initially, maybe you want to give it a little bit more room to drop and you would want to buy further down. So this is just an example of how we do that. And I'm actually going to plot that buy below target. And we're actually going to keep that on there uh, going forward so that you can kind of see how that is. And we can actually change how it's going to look on the chart. And let's see, what have I done? The RSI divergent looks back. Okay, so I forgot to add a couple more variables. So we need the divergence look back and also the buy below target. I need to initialize that variable as well, it looks like. Let's see, this would be with the RSI. So we're, this is the amount of candles we're going to look back for the lowest RSI. And let's see, the buy below target, and I do apologize, I'm copying this code from the other screen here. Uh, the reason that's not working is because it's in that same line, so there isn't actually anything wrong with the buy below target. Okay, there we go. So now you can see this line that it's requiring the price to be below before it will buy, but we haven't actually done that as part of our uh, uh, conditions here in our is a buy. Now, if you were following the last video, you would know how we've set this up so we can track what uh, conditions have to be met. So we're just going to add a new one in here and it's going to be really simple. We just have to have our um, buy below target source of the current candle, which by default is going to be the current price uh, through the close. You can see that's set by default to close. And we're going to require our current price be below this blue line, which is our current uh, buy below target. So let's see if that makes any difference on this particular uh, strategy here. Yeah, so it took away a lot of, well, all of the trades from here. So we're going to be working on changing this to where hopefully we can find those things a little bit more going forward. So I've shown you how the lowest bars work going backwards. And there's also one where we did the lowest. So we also want to require that the RSI be below a certain number. So we're going to look at a requirement for the RSI and we need the RSI in, within our look back, its lowest value has to be below a certain number. So, I mean, this is probably a little bit confusing again, but say we're looking back on our candles and let me apologize. I, I've probably had my head covering up a little bit of things. Let me hide that now. Uh, we're gonna be looking back in the candles for the lowest RSI value and what we're going to do is say the lowest RSI value is this one. We actually want to require it be to be below a certain number. So if we're looking back and our lowest RSI is, you know, still way up here, like at 50, that might not be optimal, especially when you're looking for a bullish divergence. So we want to require that it's below 25 or 30, something like that, the lowest value in our look back period. And then we can add that in there. And once it meets that and the price is still below, and all of these other things, then everything will come to work. So let's go and take a look here at how we're doing this. And this is actually quite simple. Let me copy this condition over. Uh, this is another condition on our is a buy statement. We're just copying some more stuff over. We are going to use the lowest function. I've already told you how this works. And this is comparing the smooth SRI for some reason. That's like I need to change that in my uh, more completed script here. But we are requiring that the RSI be below, uh, using its lowest value in that look back period, below uh, what we have set with our input. So if we set this to 30, it's got to be below that in its lowest value going back. So that's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, let me see if there were any else that I also needed to do. We also needed to set another one. Um, this is for the smooth SRI. It's pretty much the same thing. But once we have this one, I think this is pretty much the same script that I have. There might be a few things different. Now this is the same thing. We basically just want to ensure that with our bullish divergence that our current smooth RSS, 
RSI, excuse me, uh, the orange line here is above a certain value or below a certain value, excuse me. So uh, we're requiring that it has a downtrend of three in the default, but if that downtrend is coming up around 50, then that might not be a good time to buy. So we want to require that its downtrend of three occurs below a certain value. So we're going to by default require that to be 35. Let's go down here and let me copy this. I'm on the other screen right now looking for this. Here we go. And there was also a um, RSI currently below as well. So we'll do that. It's the same concept as a smooth RSI. And you can tell we're getting a lot of conditions now. Uh, you can see I've added in the smooth RSI and the RSI. Uh, below a certain value and we have to add in that other RSI currently below parameter or input I should say and then I think we're going to be done oh no it's already on there currently below did I already have that on there yes my apologies I had just not added the one with the smooth SRI RSI <laughs> excuse me uh, I'm a little off today so let's save this and let's see, we had one issue. Where is this? Oh, I had already uh, added that in there. We just didn't have the, oh well, we already did have the condition. So yeah, I'm way off right now. I thought that we hadn't done that, but we had. Uh, I think the thing that really threw me off was on the lowest here, it used the SRSI when it wasn't supposed to. So that completely threw me off on everything we've been doing since then. Okay, you can see we still don't have any trades, so let's try to change these numbers around to where we can get something. We're on a five minute chart here. Um, let's see, I'm going to use, I'm trying to copy some of these from the other one here. Well, let me just copy some of these over from my uh, default script. I'll actually just type them in here. It'll be a little bit easier, I believe. All right, our RSI curve is 14, currently below was 30. All right, our divergence look back period was 25. Our RSI lowest divergent look back period. Let's see, which one is this one? Oh yeah, that's that one. It was set to 25 as well in the completed script. The SRSI curve is Let's see, where is this one? 10. Uh, the SRSI currently below I have is also 30. And then the minimum SRSI downtrend is three as well. Let's see, there's another setting here. Uh, the SRSI currently below 35. So what did I say 34 here? My apologies here. That was the RSI currently below. So I was looking at the wrong one. Let's save this one and see if that makes any difference to the uh, strat to the uh, strategy tester here. Okay, so you can see it's actually making some trades again. So let's take a look. Uh, they were all profitable except for one. We had 13 trades now. I think before we had 11 or 12. So we're actually doing pretty good. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can go back and find one of these trades so we can get an idea of how they're occurring. I think these two are really good examples of what we're actually trying to accomplish. And let me uh, pull this up to where it's much larger here for you. So you can see within our look back period, we were looking for the lowest RSI value and we were setting our minimum buy target to a certain value here. And we wanted the price to close below this line with a minimum SRSI downtrend of three below a certain value with the current RSI below a certain value. And it kind of caught a bull divergence here. You can see it bounced pretty well from there. And the same thing here. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed that it actually caught this one because that's an extended period of dips one after the other and it caught it pretty much right at the bottom. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out right now. This one I think caught it a little too soon obviously and uh, it hit its stop loss. You have one here and uh, you can kind of play around with the stop loss and the uh, take profit to maximize. I think 
the settings I had, I forgot to update these. So I used 3 and 1.75. Let me see if that was actually any better or not. Uh, go back to the performance summary. No, it wasn't any better. Uh, so, yeah, you can play around with these. This, the settings that I have on this video, eh, it might have been slightly better. Let me change it back again. Yeah, so it was it was better. So you can play around, adjust these numbers up and down with the toggles here to try and find something that'll uh, result in more uh, returns on the uh, performance summary. But that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you've appreciated. We've went over the lowest function and the lowest bars. So just keep in mind that the same thing is true for the uh, highest and the highest bars function. And if you're ever confused, you can always just kind of hover over it in your Pine Script Editor and hold down the control key and click that. It'll take you to the uh, updated Pine Script language reference manual within a modal pop-up on the screen so you don't have to actually go to another page and it'll kind of tell you what it's actually doing. But uh, yeah, I hope you appreciate this. I'm going to work on getting this and publishing it so uh, everyone will have access to the code and you don't have to try and copy and follow along with the video itself. Uh, and you can actually play around with all the values yourself. So keep an eye on my Twitter, uh, also my Discord. I'll probably try and update on both of those places when these things are completed and published for everyone to see. Uh, I really hope you all appreciate me doing that. If you do, please like the video, please comment, uh, subscribe. Uh, give me uh, comments, please, on what else you would like to see. I've had a few people make some suggestions. There's some really good stuff coming in. I've got a lot of content planned. Uh, the hard part is getting time to do it. I've been working on a utility for myself that's going to automate a lot of things and I can't wait to share this with you. If you've been following my Twitter, you've probably got a really good idea of what it is because I've been making some test posts with the utility I'm working on and uh, it's going to be sharing a lot of information automatically and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So definitely stay around on the channel to check out that video coming up soon because we're going to be sharing a lot of great stuff. Um, when that comes out. But other than that, I've already asked you to like and comment. Uh, you can always also check out my TradingView profile if you like what we've been doing here. Uh, you can always check out the TradingView profile, see some of the ideas I've posted. I haven't really posted a lot of ideas lately, mostly because I've been so busy working on this utility and also the content for these videos. Um, so hopefully once we get that utility completed, the ideas will be much easier to uh, create and come by. You can also check out the scripts that we've already made and published here. And I'm going to try and get through this quickly. There's also the referral. So if you've been following along and you wanted a paid subscription, uh, please use the referral link. It's in the description of the video. That helps me a lot. and also helps you as well. You get $30 towards an upgraded plan once you pay for your first one. And once you do that, that really helps me uh, because the premium subscription is pretty expensive. So I appreciate you all watching. Uh, definitely stay tuned. There's a lot of great stuff coming.